Okie doke, let's check some things out. And Guzma probably gonna wrap it up here pretty soon too. I do appreciate you stopping by hanging out as well. Whenever the chat and my cameras come back up again, I might do some fishing tomorrow, even though I'm not a big fan of fishing, but to do that with uh, with people that are visiting here. So we'll end up doing that. Um, but yeah, with the, uh, with the food court there, the, uh, seems like an earthly cause, not a sign they were typically God. not really doing anything extra or being like super particularly friendly. Some people are. Sometimes the manager is in there and is always super friendly. But uh, a lot of the staff usually aren't. The uh, guy that mainly runs the pizza area, him I like though. He seems pretty nice. I remember when I went there and grabbed a pizza on Halloween when I was dressed up in my full Luigi cosplay with like my Ghostbusters proton pack on my back. Uh, he saw that I was dressed up as Luigi, so when he was asking about the toppings and after I'd ordered a pepperoni pizza, he asked me, no mushrooms today, sir? <laughs> and I uh, and I laughed and I was like, no, not today. Maybe uh, maybe another time. And I thought that was kind of funny. So that's the kind of person that I'd give a tip. That's funny. Like, <laughs> Could that drought affect the mind? But yeah. Let's uh, let's see here. Now I gotta scroll up a little bit to see something Rob's here. Whoa, if it lets me scroll up. Yeah, and Guzma sometimes is extra fees too for delivery fee where they say it's completely separate from the tip. Like, what the fuck? That's bullshit. Well, I guess that's how the people that make the delivery actually make their money. Like, it's not typically the company themselves. Like, if it's something like Uber Eats or DoorDash or whatever the heck, that's how they'd make their, uh, that's how they make their money. Like, I'm sure some businesses do their own delivery, but... That's not always, not always the case. Yeah, whenever I order pizza, for example, have a tax fee, a delivery fee, and the option to tip too. Yeah, it does add up for sure. Definitely does. There, Anima had a delivery driver who delivered your food, and he told you, you know, on the app, you can also adjust the tip percentage. And I'm like, I know, but he said, okay, but for only $6, really? And that was 18%. 18% is a good tip, I would say here. And yeah... Like, I mean, I've seen videos online from, like, doorbell cameras and stuff like that of delivery drivers who get really, really upset about tip amounts, or... I don't know what to follow up that sentence with. I've seen videos of, like, delivery drivers who get really upset about tips. Some people that are just, like... I've seen a couple videos where I don't think that they're real. They're probably just, like, exaggerated acting of people that are like, Oh, I'm not gonna give you this food because, like, you, uh because you didn't tip good enough or something like that, where I'm sure it's just an act and not a real thing, but it still exemplifies that there is an issue in the, uh, in the, in the space. <laughs> New culture cash. Yeah, that's the hack. If you're going to go get, like, something at, like, a food court or fast food or something like that, just use cash. The people that are working there are not going to ask you about a tip if you're, if you're giving cash. That's, they don't want to ask about that. They want the machine to ask for them. Um, so, yeah, there's that. That's why you hate this tip culture. It's gratuity. Yeah. And if they hate working as a delivery driver because they don't earn much money from tips, then why don't they just go and find another job? In a perfect world, you would hope that that's what they do. I'm sure there are some people that are just like, hey, easy money. Let's hope that people actually tip me. But for a lot of people, I assume it's just like, hey, this is the one job I can find myself working. So it might not always be super easy. But... Yeah, I'm sure there's like a mix of both cases there, most likely. But ideally, yeah, find something where you're not going to be relying on people giving something extra because your employer refuses you to pay like a decent wage. Like, I'll honestly take food prices being a little bit higher and then not be expected to tip for a lot of places. Though, for a lot of places, the prices of things have been going up way past the rate of inflation has been going up in the same amount of time. So, I mean, yeah... And yeah, I remember waking up early and going charter fishing with you there, Guzma. Who says they're still timed out from chat? Nice. Yeah, no, make Harmonia laugh and get paid. Yeah, and just make a make a good joke while you're preparing the food. Just do that. But yeah, take care there, Guzma. But yeah, employers that are just like, hey, let's just pay your staff, like, basically nothing. And just expect the customer to put that bill. It's like, that's not a, that's not all that great. And there's a lot of businesses where I really wouldn't really want to support them slash be 
I was about to say Slash be giving tips, but the staff wouldn't really be at fault for the issues there. But at the same time, just a business that I want to not support all that, like not all that much at all. So the Stollery Children's Hospital that I uh, that I've done a lot of fundraisers for all the November 24 hour charity streams through Extra Life are fundraisers for the Stollery Children's Hospital because it's a really good place that makes like a very important impact. And I used to get like lunch from there from time to time in a food court that's on the bottom floor. And the business changed ownership a couple of years ago. And the staff that had been working there had been working there for a long, long ass time. Like to the point that they'd be long overdue for a pay raise with how long they've been working there. The new owners that took over the Stollery Children's food court area, or at least the one burger place. There are other like food court areas elsewhere in the hospital, but like the main area and like the near the entrance. The new owners there, they just fired all the old staff and then hired new people back so that they could pay them for dirt cheap. So like you go in there after the new ownership and it's all completely new faces of people that are being paid like minimum wage all over again. So they wouldn't have to give raises to the new people. And it's like, yeah, I um, I don't really get lunch there anymore. Is the uh, is the case? Let me tell you. That's uh, yeah. So there's a, uh, so there's some businesses there, where it's like, yeah, the less money I give to them, the better. I I haven't been in there, looking around the area for a little while now. I don't know if that's still the case. If it's still under those owners that did that. Uh, if I need to grab food from somewhere on the uh, campus area around there, I just go to a, a different food court that I was describing earlier. <laughs> this is what I typically do. Don't really grab lunch at the stallery all that often anymore. <laughs> is a uh, is kind of the case. I've kind of yeah, yeah. And you'd think that's not really a the way to do that in a children's hospital of all places. So the owners of that area there, it's like wow, they uh. They really want lots of profit there. And it's not like the food was cheap by any means there. If you get a bacon cheeseburger, like just on its own, before fries, that's like $10 right there. A regular cheeseburger without like any extra things on it, I think is like eight bucks, something like that. And then fries is like an extra thing on top of that. So it's not exactly cheap by any means. Can my print cam go off, please? Why ridiculous? Maybe? Because if nope. you wanted to punish him, you just smite him or have an ego. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you wouldn't curse his heart. It's one of those things where it's like Of course not. The Your food is really just slapped together like really quickly, easily of by a bunch of people that are being paid minimum wage. And uh well it's not off to for now. So like it's really nothing special. But it's uh some kind of sickness in the crop. Definitely not that's cheap food by any crazy. means. Because if you're like that's someone that's a patient in the hospital, or you're like a family member visiting someone that's in hospital and you want to grab some food, where else are you gonna go? Like, so I guess I'll, I don't know, I'll come back this way. And yeah, McDonald's has gotten pricey too. Like, I have heard that apparently a lot of fast food places, after a lot of pushes from consumers slash like regulation changes by local governments, depending on the area, have been starting to pay staff more and more from what I've heard. And apparently the extra expenses of that plus more are being put onto the consumer, even though like when you account for how much money these businesses make and like, it is when you account for inflation, plus wage increases, the price has still gone up on top of those as well. And it's like, Do you know the way that places like McDonald's used to be is, um, is an earthly plague. I haven't been paying attention. I've been ranting about tipping. And it's polluting your mind. What do we do? How do the we big appeal of fast food and places like McDonald's is you go there, it's pretty cheap. You don't expect anything all that, all that special. Like it's quickly thrown together, but you get it for the price for the convenience is what it is. Like just being able to go through the drive through get something quick and easy that like tastes decent. And for the convenience, the cost isn't too bad was the idea. It's not a great meal, but it's a very convenient meal. That was the trade-off. But now, that's no longer the trade-off. 
Like, it used to be, like, oh, you can put up with them getting your order wrong once in a while, or, like, the burger being, like, falling apart right as you get it. But now, it's still that exact same quality and exact same convenience with, like, the speed that you get it, but much, much more expensive prices that make you question, like, huh, what... What's the point in it anymore again? If, uh... Like, I guess there's still the convenience part of it. But it's no longer the trade-off of, hey, this isn't very expensive much at all, but they'll get the order wrong sometimes, but that's that's not a big deal. It's not bad for the price and the convenience. We still have the not-so-great quality. Oh, I have to burn this. We still have the not-so-great quality. We still have the convenience. But the price is, uh, just continuing to go up. Well, hi, how is it going here? Wow, this is so laggy. Are these gonna turn off? There we go. It had to be done. So, uh, I do feel a bit better already. Yeah, and there's so many businesses that want to gamify their uh, their business model. Bad weed. Like, I feel like gamification is a bit of a problem in even the gaming industry itself. Gamification basically means when you're trying to put like game mechanics into something that doesn't have like game mechanics by default like a point system working f for like a certain business something like that um so to clarify what i mean by like gamification in the gaming industry i mean like things that are designed to keep you playing over and over and over on end like season passes or your dailies and stuff like that that i really don't like being in the gaming industry honestly but a lot of businesses are picking up gamification aspects for their consumers. Like with McDonald's nowadays, for example, there's an app where anytime you're going through a drive-thru, they'll ask you like, hello, are you collecting points on the app today? And then you can say like your four digit code and then they'll like punch that in. And then as you make that purchase, you get some points and then you can save up those points and like redeem them for free meals later or like punch cards. There was a Frozen Bros in the small town there used to be, if it is still Frozen Bros. I know that went through some new ownership. It might be, have a different name now. But like a decade ago, they used to have little stamp cards where every time you shop with them, they stamp your card. And when you get like 10 stamps, you get like a free thing. Like there used to be physical things like that. I remember that as a kid forever ago. But nowadays, everything is digital. And McDonald's, as an example, has their points app. And what a lot of these places do is they'll also make your points only last for a certain amount of time so the app might notify you like oh if you don't use these points by x date they're going to expire they don't last forever they uh they only last for a certain amount of time so <laughs> that is their way of incentivizing you to try and come regularly make coming to their business a habitual thing not just the kind of thing that you do in the moment for convenience, but work into the schedule in some way, make it habitual, continue to gain new points, and spend the points that you had previously accumulated. After all, you don't want those points that you spent real money on to go to waste, do you? So you better go back and spend those points before they expire. It's... It's honestly kind of gross. i not really a big fan there. But yeah. And yeah, it's so sad it went from fast food to fast restaurant food in terms of prices. Bye. But Bye. not in terms of the quality. It's, yeah, gotcha it's season you. pass micro yes. micro well, transition. I assume that's about to say micro transaction. You, you know me. You but know yeah, me. I mean they do it because it works. What happened? I was hurt like probably the most famous example of gamification in Wolves, fast food is McDonald's and Monopoly. Everywhere. Like, the whole Monopoly boards no, that they do. Making people want to go purchase from there more often while it's going on. Because what if you just so happen to get, like, that one property you're missing? But I was and then you get, like, the cool I prize. Totem as I, ran. I can look for your totem. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank like, I'm sure thank that the whole Monopoly collab there makes them a lot, a lot of money. Where, Where did the attack happen? At? I was leading my flock to pasture through the forest south of the city. I know others have heard wolves howling there on many nights, but I took a chance. But yeah, and with the uh, apps, I know my mom has the McDonald's app. Because, I mean, if you go there from time to time, there's basically no reason not to have it. Unless you just don't want to get, like, <laughs> notifications or whatever from 
that specific company. I don't know if she gets notifications. I don't have the app myself, and I don't really have any intention of getting it. But it's like, hey, if you get things from there from time to time, I can get a free thing on and off. Then it's like, why not? So I know McDonald's has an app. I know Tim Hortons has an app because I'm pretty sure she has that too. And they ask when we go to Tim Hortons, like if you have the, uh, if you have a app or thing where Bob. Tell me about this, Dalton. I'm pretty sure that one's just a QR code or something like that that you pull up on your phone on the app and they scan. I think. I don't know. I haven't actually used the app there in a long, long time. But I don't think it's a code like McDonald's does. But I know Tim Hortons has a points thing too. I'm sure that lots of other fast food places probably have their own point systems. And I'm sure that like those points don't last forever. Why would they? No, no, of course not. I'll look for the totem. I haven't been paying attention. I've been rambling about other things. Things with more real life implications here <laughs> is the case. Whoa, here we go. But yeah, autocorrect, you'd love to see it. Remember that you were a victim? What a monopoly? It still goes on. It still goes on annually. But there was a time that you were really into it there. And what really grinds your gears? Bag fees. Yeah, with that going on now. There are some days when my mom and I are going into work in the morning. And like sometimes at the end of a week, we might just get something through a drive through on the way on the way there. Like maybe going through the drive through at McDonald's and using the points app thing where Bob there. And I don't know if it's a uh, Alberta thing or if it's a Canada thing. I think uh, the last time I was in the fishing shop getting like my fishing license about a month ago, they were saying something about like Calgary doesn't have to deal with that yet or something like that. I don't know. But around here, at least it's the case. They ask you there. Do you want a bag with your food? It used to be that, like, they would just hand you your food in a bag, and that's how you would get your food. But now, they are required to ask, would you like a bag? And if you would like a bag, that's going to be an additional five cents. And that was money that was already being made by the company in that, like, they were already providing these bags, and now they're just making... I, I probably didn't phrase that right. Let me just rephrase that. The company was already supplying the bags for free, but now they get to charge money for five cents for a bag because that's a new regulation to try to encourage people to bring their own bags <laughs> and that companies can't provide bags for free anymore. To, uh, there's better ways to save the environment. There are far, far better ways than that. It just makes it really, really annoying. <laughs> and uh, these companies that were previously providing these bags for free that are now having that expense put onto the consumer. It's not like five cents is being taken off of the food fee to make up for the fact that consumers are now paying an extra five cents for like a bag every time they go through. So anytime that anyone goes through and pays like five cents for a bag, that's an extra five cents that the company wasn't making before because it used to be built into the cost of the food. And I'm sure that the prices of the food are designed to account for like the cost, the minuscule cost of the bag, but still, to account for the cost of the bag. Now, that's still an extra purchase. And, like, it can make sense for something like grocery stores, for example, where, like, if you go grocery shopping, you can pull a whole bunch of bags out of your car, put them in the shopping cart, and then, like, go and use your bags, and that's a good thing to be doing. But fast food? Really? Like, you're not gonna be there with, like, a bag of the ready. Like, as you're going through a drive through hold on the bag and be like, yeah, just dump it all in here because I didn't want to pay that five cents. Like, that's not a thing that people are going to do, presumably. I don't know anyone that does that, at least. So, because we usually just eat on the way in the one-off instances that we do that from time to time, we uh, always say, no, we don't need a bag. So what they do is they take this little plastic bin and they hand you the whole bin. And you're expected to take out all your food and then you hand them back the bin that, that all your food was in. And that's how it works now. If you don't pay five cents for a bag, that that's what you have to do. And that's what we do if we're grabbing breakfast through a drive through on the way to work at like the end of a week. That's, uh, that's the way that it goes. And it's so, so dumb. And it's just making more money for these mega corporations. That are already making so much money. Again, the food did not get five cents cheaper to make up for the fact that consumers are now paying an extra five cents if they don't won't want everything handed to them in a bin that they have to take things out of and then hand the bin back. Like it, it it's ridiculous.
it really pisses my mom off. <laughs> but yeah, remember those days where you were glued to it? You won $100 from it after spending more than 100 from the month on the Monopoly there. And yeah, plus uh, paper straws there. Can I just yoink this thing? Oh, cool. One thing that I've seen some places do that I actually quite like is making PLA straws. PLA is, I forget what it stands for, but uh, this is PLA. All these are PLA. PLA is the plant-based plastic that is like super recyclable. So it's not made from oils. Like you don't have to synthesize that. It's the plant-based plastic. And that's a super common material used in 3D printing. So you see like the bazillion dragons and stuff that I have here. They're all in PLA plastic. I do have lots of pet G plastics as well here, which are, which is the oil-based plastic. I, I print in pet G if I need like a functional print, like I'm printing plant pots or something like that, where it needs to withstand some wear and tear. I'm going to print it in pet G, not PLA, the super brittle, cheapo kind of stuff if I need something functional. But for like models, it works great. And at some restaurants that I've gone to that provide straws, some of them instead of providing paper straws, will provide PLA plastic straws. So it's still plastic and you don't have to worry about the straw dissolving like when you're halfway through your drink. You still get plastic, but it's a plant-based plastic. It's not the oil-based plastic. It's the exact same type of plastic that I 3D print them. The thing that's printing right now is PLA plastic. It is transparent blue PLA plastic is what is currently being printed for that dragon. So. Like, if more places want to start using, like, PLA plastic straws, awesome. But things like paper straws are really just one of those efforts to, uh... You know how, uh, we were talking not that long ago about companies that try to make it look like they care when they really don't, just to get, like, brownie points in whatever way they can? That's, that's basically paper straws in a nutshell. That's, uh, that's them showing, like, wow, we're really, really doing our part to, uh compact climate change when it's like, you're really not. <laughs> like, in the grand scheme of things with everything you do, you just want to have something that the consumer sees be shown to be making a difference and making an impact and just make the consumer feel like it's making a difference that this is the type of product that they're getting now. I mean, it's the same kind of thing with electric cars where it's like, it's sold with the idea that it's a whole lot more environmentally friendly. When it's like, it's really not when you consider the rare earth minerals that have to go into making these batteries that will actually work semi-decently well in these cars. You're not going to get a whole lot of mileage out of them. You're going to need to refill on electricity a whole lot. Like, my cousin who works as a philosophy professor in uh, on Vancouver Island, I don't even think that he can take his electric car all the way to and from work. I think he needs to charge it like once along the way every time he tries to go from out of town to in town for for his teaching job in philosophy and the way that electricity is acquired is not exactly going to be in the most green means but it's just one of those things where what you visibly see makes it look better you're looking at this car that's not emitting any well emissions so like whoa i i did my part i invested in this more expensive vehicle and it's not generating any emissions wow I did my part by making that investment to make a difference because the methods by which the electricity is acquired is the thing that you don't see. So you don't, you don't think about that as much. And at the end of the day, you're really, really not making that much of a difference. Why is the print cam not going off? Well, like maybe there will be one day that electric vehicles might actually be solid enough. And the method by which we acquire electricity, like, green enough to be able to make a significant difference. But we are not at that point yet. But companies want to make money now. So, <laughs> you know. Um, it was just it was luck. luck that I was able to find it. The wolves had dragged it deep into their den. But, Here you like, go. paper straws, electric vehicles, Good it's stuff like that where it's better. just what the consumer is seeing makes them feel better about the Just impact the product the they're getting you. makes you can call me when Cassandra. really it's Thank not you. that much of a difference ultimately Cassandra. and the things that these companies are actually doing behind the scenes is not changing at all 
because that's not the thing that people see and people don't want to look into what these companies are doing and really care as much about that and then yeah we're getting political this stream aren't we <laughs> and it's uh stuff that really annoys me about about a lot of big businesses how's it going say rico madden things are not super great here i thought i had my truck working after 11 months of tinkering on it and it broke down and i was stranded at a gas station earlier today and i had to get pulled home by my uh by my dad <laughs> We just kind of attached a rope from the back of his modern Dodge truck onto the front of my antique Dodge truck and slowly pulled me home. So at least I didn't have to pay for a tow truck this time or wait several hours at 11 p.m. for a tow truck to arrive. But it still kind of sucked. It's home and safe now, but I'm starting to lose my mind over this truck more so than I was before. And I'm kind of struggling to keep my motivation up as it's one thing after another. So yeah, not super great. But now we're rambling about, like, politics and things like tipping culture and paper straws and all these awful, like, things that just suck, man. <laughs> this is what the stream conversation is kind of devolved into here. Yeah, and let's see here. 